...wandered neatly from father to son, since there were princes in the tower, would revert to the crown, with nary a long-lost cousin in sight to lay claim upon it. And, he frequently reminded his wife, it was thanks to his early manoeuvrings that one of his five daughters was already settled, and they need only fret about the other four. So would she please stop yammering on about the poor Duke of Wyndham and his slow progress to the altar? Lord Crowland treasured peace and quiet above all else, which was something he really ought to have considered before taking the former Anthea Grantham as his bride. It wasn't that anyone thought that the Duke would renege on his promise to Amelia and her family. On the contrary, it was well known that the Duke of Wyndham was a man of his word, and if he said he would marry Amelia Willoughby, then as God was anyone's witness, he would. It was just that he intended to do so when it was convenient to him, which wasn't necessarily when it would be convenient to her, or, more to the point, her mother. And so here she was, back in Lincolnshire, and she was still Lady Amelia Willoughby. And I don't mind it at all, she declared, when Grace Eversley brought up the matter at the Lincolnshire Dance and Assembly. Aside from being the closest friend of Amelia's sister Elizabeth, Grace Eversley was the companion to the Dowager Duchess of Wyndham, and thus in far closer contact with Amelia's affianced husband than Amelia ever had occasion to be. Oh, no, Grace quickly assured her. I did not mean to imply that you did. All she said, Elizabeth put in, giving Amelia a queer look was that his grace plans to remain at Belgrave for six months at least. And then you said, I know what I said, Amelia bit off, feeling her skin flush, which wasn't precisely true. She could not have repeated her speech word for word, but she had a sneaking suspicion that if she tried, it would come out something like, well, that's certainly lovely, but I shouldn't read anything into it. And in any case, Elizabeth's wedding is next month so I certainly could not dream of finalising anything any time soon, and regardless of what anyone says, I am in no great rush to marry him. Something, something, something. I barely know the man. Something, something more. Still Amelia Willoughby, and I don't mind it at all. Which was not the sort of speech one generally wished to relive in one's head. There was an awkward, empty moment, and then Grace cleared her throat and said, he said he would be here this evening. He did? Amelia asked, her eyes flying to Grace's. Grace nodded. I saw him at supper. Or rather, I saw him as he walked through the room as we were taking supper. He chose not to dine with us. I think he and his grandmother are quarrelling, she added as an aside. They frequently do. Amelia felt the corners of her mouth tighten. Not in anger not even in irritation. It was resignation, really, more than anything else. I suppose the dowager pestered him about me, she said. Grace looked as if she did not wish to answer, but finally she said, Well, yes. Which was to be expected. It was well known that the dowager Duchess of Wyndham was even more eager to see the marriage take place than Amelia's own mother. It was also well known that the Duke found his grandmother vexing at best, and Amelia was not at all surprised that he would agree to attend the assembly just to get her to leave him alone. As it was also well known that the Duke did not make promises lightly, Amelia was quite certain that he would indeed make an appearance at the assembly, which meant that the remainder of the evening would follow a well-worn path. The Duke would arrive. Everyone would look at him. Then everyone would look at her, and then he would approach. They would share several minutes of awkward conversation. He would ask her to dance. She would accept. And when they were done, he would kiss her hand and depart. Presumably to seek the attentions of another woman, a different kind of woman, the sort one did not marry. It was not something Amelia cared to ponder. Not that that ever stopped her from doing so. But truly, could one expect fidelity from a man before marriage?
It wandered neatly from father to son, since there were princes in the tower, would revert to the crown, with nary a long-lost cousin in sight to lay claim upon it. And, he frequently reminded his wife, it was thanks to his early manoeuvrings that one of his five daughters was already settled, and they need only fret about the other four. So would she please stop yammering on about the poor Duke of Wyndham and his slow progress to the